Good morning, good morning. It's too bloody early in the morning to do some electronics, but still I persist. Okie dokie, let's get going. We're gonna make a stream. Hey, Fair Fight 14, good morning, sir. All excited for Norbrek. The Norbrek. I'm uh, working on a PSU today, because I've never done one. So I thought it would be maybe slightly interesting. I'm setting this up. If I can figure out Eagle's bloody oh, open project, you gotta open the project. So, um, ah, no, bugger off. What is this doing? Sorry, Eagle's just messing around, right. New schematic, that's what we want. Oh, so that's gonna be uh, an exciting new uh, thing for you, Fair Fight. I hope, hopefully it'll live up to the uh, your expectations though, if you've not been to one for a while. You know, I would, I'd hate to think that you've uh, wasted your, uh, you know, opportunity. <laughs> opportunity to go um, and then didn't you know enjoy it but what I'm doing today though should we um, I'll let you know what I'm up to so today I'm going to uh, basically design a linear power supply just because I've never done it before and um, because a lot of things um, you know I've got the TRS-80 and the Commodore 64 and all those things and they do tend to sort of use these external power supplies which sometimes fail or go a bit iffy so I was like, well, let's just start learning how to design our own so that we can just build new PCBs and just crack open the old power supplies and put in uh, a fresh, a fresh thing. So let me just start with a frame. I always like to start with a drawing frame. Frame. I suspect an A4 will be plenty big. And at least we can print that if we have to. Okay. A drawing frame. Oh yeah, well I'm yeah I'm definitely looking forward to meeting everybody. Um, it's really funny. I, I kind of went a bit um, not off it, but I was like you know a bit uh, ambivalent to it a little bit. But um, I'm kind of ambivalent to for going for the um, video game experience and seeing the you know the panels and all of that stuff I'm kind of a bit meh about that but I'm definitely buzzed about seeing everybody else so I guess it's turning more into a social thing for me Edwin good morning hopefully it's I think it's morning where everybody is unless you're watching from China um good morning Edward Edwin sorry we are uh, about to uh, design a PSU and I'm not watching my own YouTube stream so I'm just going to check real quick that it's all kind of caught up <laughs> with where we are um, so far it's not showing me anything and I don't know if you've seen that but if you're, if, you've, if you're running YouTube on a live stream you get to see like a little panel like this and I'm just assuming it's working I'm just going to assume it's it's keeping up so um, AC power supplies right I mean a linear power supply which is what we're going to design today is pretty simple it really consists of um, really three main components you've got your transformer so your transformer is taking ac 240 volts to ac some other voltage now um, that's the due to the interaction the ratio between the primary and the secondary um, windings so you can actually take it up or down you could go to 240 volts to a th you know a thousand volts if you wanted to or you can take it down as low as you know a few volts so That'll be an AC to AC to conversion, uh, AC to AC conversion. We're going to do something, go to something sensible that's useful for us. So useful range normally is about 12 volts because you could normally regulate 12 volts up or down a bit. Or I say up, <laughs> down a bit. You can use it kind of as 12, use it as 9, use it as 5, use it as 
four. You know, you've got those little switching power supply, and that's how they work. Edwin, um, yeah, it could be as high a power PSU as you want, really, to be honest with you. Um, I should be doing it to data sheets, but I'm just going to see what, what we've got in legal's libraries, really. So let's type transformer. So I was talking about the three parts, right? So let's see. We've got the first part is the actual transformer. The second part is the rectification. So you want to go from AC to DC ideally. So we don't want like halfway. We want full wave rectification so that you're going to get a nice DC output. So that normally requires at least four diodes. We know that. And then once you've got that, you want to go through whatever regulation you need to take it down to Chinatown. So you want to go to like five volts, you'll need a five volt regulator. And again, all of these help, these stages help. And in mid between that, you'll normally chuck in an electrolytic capacitor or two to kind of smooth those outputs. And that's jobs are good and basically. Something uh, we're probably going to put in at some point as well is a um, fuse because they kind of help. Now, before we just go randomly choosing a transformer, I would <laughs> transformers. Yeah, yep, yep. I'm gonna go to Mouser. Yeah, we go Mouser Electronics. Just because uh, it's gonna be a linear power supply, Edwin. It's just gonna be old school, simple, linear, tried and tested, robust and true. The linear power supply is all for you. Um, the reason being, I think if you can make basically a linear power supply and then back it up with some good modern regulation in the end, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. So do we want transformers or power transformers? I suspect we want power transformers. Now there are different types of transformers and I kind of think the best kind are the toroidal transformers. Um, but they're also the sort of most expensive. So let's um, toroidal transformer. Let's try one of those. I think I spelled that definitely wrong. So uh, fair fight, the difference. So you've got two kinds of transformers. You've got the linear transformers that have um, the, uh, sorry, linear power supplies that really what they do is they take out all the kind of high current stuff normally, the big stuff in the transformer, and they replace it with something um, which is basic electronics. So they use lots of electronics. And I kind of think they do little tricks like they take the voltage, you know, there's these interplays between voltage and current. So I suspect they do things that they can run at quite high frequencies. They're switching very quickly. They take the voltage up to uh, a certain level and then they tap that off. It, it's too complicated right now for me to even try to fathom how they work, but it is stuff like that. So you've got these primary and secondary. So we're going to say primary, uh, for example, let's say 230 volts. Uh, yeah, there's only three remaining with a 28 volt secondary. Let's just, we'll just go through this list a little bit. 230. 230. So you've got 230 to 12.6. And look, you've got a 240 there. Yeah, we'll just go to the, use the 230 range. I don't know why they've got so many bloody uh, types here, but there we go. Right. Let's see what this. There's only one that this filter gives us. Yep. Yeah. But that looks pretty much the kind of thing <laughs> that you'll end up with. And uh, so what you're looking at though is for 240. Let's go eBay. Um, transform a coil. What we're going to do is we're just going to find a generic one that we can find on eBay, and then we'll uh, use use that kind of as a, as an idea. Um, transform a coil to forty volt. The reason being, I suspect you see, like they've got these mounting lugs, for example. Um, if, if we've got you've got four wires to hook up from most transformers, so we just as long as we make the PCB take four wire inputs, uh, I think we're going to be okay. But it would be nice to find one that we could actually mount to the PCB. Morning, Andrew. Good morning, sir. Um, it is an early start today. It's because I'm looking after the kids, and you can see I'm not in the room looking after them, and I'm wondering. I can't hear them. They're in the uh, the lounge playing uh, Legend of of Zelda. Um, like like I should be doing. Look, we're gonna just we're gonna we're just gonna look through the bloody eagle footprints. It doesn't matter, does it? 
you can substitute out one for another, but we definitely don't want a surface mount transformer because it's going to be tiny. Although it might be neat if we want a project where we can fit the whole... Um, well, there you go. That's pretty much standard, isn't it? Where we can fit the whole project uh, basically inside a um, wall wart. So you can put the transformer and everything in the wall wart. So this one actually did say, this did have this kind of a data sheet, didn't it? A U15 transformer. So let me just type that into Google real quick. U15 transformer. Ah, cool. Let's see a U15. U15. Okay, well, it doesn't really give us anything, does it? So here we go, U15 to U20. So it seems to be some sort of standardized footprints. Hopefully it's something that we see these footprinty things. Yeah, we'll roll with that. I mean, if that, that probably is it. Whatever, generic transformer. So we're going to add some wires just so I don't start losing my place here. How do we add wires in Bloody Eagle? Wires. Is this a wire now? Yeah. <laughs> you can tell that I'm sort of a bit rusty. I've been uh, not using Eagle for a couple of days in a way. Right, so that's our transformer first things first. Yeah, Edwin, the kids must have found the credit card. They've been very quiet. They're making all those online DLCs. They keep saying to me, oh, I want to um, do the Legend of uh, Zelda. Now, people in the chat, by the way, tell me, do you want me to do the bridge rectifier? Bridge rectifier with discrete components or a bridge rectifier component? You've got, while I'm looking up a fuse, a suitable fuse uh, holder, basically, to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 uh. Now, remember, some of these, you know, you can change these out later. So just find something that like, looks good enough for you. I mean, that's just a normal little glass fuse holder. <laughs> Nothing beats the hobo life. Stabbing folk with my hobo knife. Boom. Look at that. Low drop diodes. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, sir. Well, this is a useful, probably a useful stream for you because we're making, we're making transformers. So, but, oh, by the way, something that's interesting, when you get certain computers which need a 5 volt and a 12 volts, we'll be able to do that with this too. You'll see why a bit later. So now, hey, David, greetings. We have um, uh, Edwin saying he wants to do it with low drop diodes and Franz is saying a bridge rectifier component. So mm, mm, mm. maybe we'll do it both ways. OK, so let's see if we can find a rectifier because we can just swap this in, right? It's oh, 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 oh. I think we need to put in the uh, 4004 while we're here because that was definitely what we'd use if we we're going to do it manually. Um, bridge bridge rectifier okay okay just seeing what's on offer so you got a little surface mount doodhickey there and then you got these slightly beefier ones so you got two options look that's a bridge rectifier component right there and the other one is diodes now my preference is um, actually I don't really have a, um, a preference Sorry, I'm just tapping in the other window because I've done it both ways. And bridge rectifiers, they can, I don't know, diodes are cheap. Bridge rectifiers are kind of cheap. They might be, I'm just looking at the price you see. You're talking about maybe a quid for a bridge rectifier, whereas the diodes themselves probably aren't going to cost you really um, much um, at all. So, you know, horses for courses. Um, but we'll go, you know, we're going to go both ways. Oh yeah, so Edwin, yeah, no, we're making a PSU, not a transformer. Sorry, did I, what have I, uh, yeah, did we building a linear PSU? I thought I was clear on that. I do apologize. So um, let's let's just do, we're going to put the reg rectifier component in first and then I'm going to swap that out with the diodes uh, because, you know, you can. Um, so what you're going to need is you're going to hook up your mains. Now, this is the real critical part where you want to put them in the right place. And I'm just noticing this rectifier component here it doesn't have pins, but OK, it does seem to it respects where the pins go. So the pins basically are going to go there to there. 
So that's your um, unrectified basically, and then you're going to come out to here. And I don't like this kind of crossing nomenclature here. You see, like we've got this crossing here. I'd normally start putting the uh, little labels on everything, um, but that's that's basically it. So you've got your mains part going in at these two ends, and then you've got your rectified thing out. And in fact, I think I will leave it with the rectified component. I'll just show you here. If you're using discrete components, right? Let's see. How would you how would you how would you put them? I'm, you can make them. You can draw them like that, basically. But I'm just trying to see if there's a, a better way to draw them. I normally draw them exactly the same way as that package. But let's let's have a look. Make it a, we'll embiggen it here. Um, so let's see how that might look. You're going to go, basically, you're going to hook to there. You're going to hook to there. The These would go like that would be an output. That's going to be an input. So the front and back, the, so this is going to be your... Um, Basically, your ground on this side and your your out on this side, and then this bit will go to your mains transformer, and that bit will go to your mains transformer. So you can see, yeah. No matter how you draw it, you've got a bit where you've got a low voltage going to cross over a high voltage, but that's that's fine. So let's delete this bit though. You don't need to see that anymore. You get the picture, right? If you if you're at the point where you're going to be designing your one, I think you'll you'll get it. Right, next bit. Oh, Edwin's saying turn it 45 degrees. Mm. So let's have a quick look at the chat real quick. Is this going to be an all-in-one so you can add different plugs on the end for different consoles or computers? Yeah, we could build this into one of those project boxes I've got, the big old project box. We can make it really beefy like 3 amps or 5 amp power supply, like a massive power supply. And we could just have plugs on this front where you could just plug different things in. Um, and you'll see now, if we add different uh, regulators in it, because we're going to add the regulator right now, you can have a 12 volt out, a 5 volt out, a 9 volt out, whatever you want. Um, and technically, you can have negative outs. You could have minus 5, minus 10, minus thing, which is kind of great, because a lot of um, older 8 bits, uh, some of them need that for their internal, um, I think it's internal audio amps, basically. Right, so let's go for our um, 7805. Oh, LM7805. <laughs> I know you got one. Now, you've got the option of loads of footprints. And if you look at the data sheet, it's to do with the heat dissipation. So you've got the little tiny one, which looks like a um, transistor. You've got some that are surface mount. You've got surface mount in the you know the other bigger package, the TO252 package. Um, but for us, we're going to use this one, the 220 package with the nice little heat sinky thing. However, I I kind of feel I want the standy up on its end one because you can get these clip-on heat sinks and they look really awesome. So I've got I've got quite a few of those clip-on heat sinks and I'll show you show them to you one day. Um, so we're going to use that. So what we do is we just bang that there and basically this is a seven eight oh five, but it could be a uh, anything really. Um, oh. So uh, Edwin's saying, make it for old school computers like C64 with a 9 volt AC and a 5 volt DC. Well, 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 well. Right. Well, that sounds like it's a good point in this circuit to actually do a do a proper. Right. I'm going to do a proper. So let's tidy this bad boy up. And uh, um, I'm going to leave this bit here. I don't like this design where you've got something crossing but I'm going to leave it there because I think it's going to help you boys and girls at home to sort of get to grips with that so we're going to leave that there uh, also on the left by the way we're going to need to put a uh, some sort of mains connector but I'm going to put in um, live and neutral just so you know it's mains I'm not really sure <laughs> okay, I kind of think plus 24 TV I'm not sure how you, what's the nomenclature for mains, to be honest with you. I mean, it could be plus minus 240V. And then this one can be minus plus 240V. I mean, or do we do 240V? Ah, I know, 240VAC. And 240VAC2. I mean, I'm not sure on that one. Um... Yeah, Edwin, you're saying the, the tilde 2.4. I don't know if you can have two lines the same, because anyway, that's fine. 
And here we're going to put out um, rec pause and rec neg. So we got two there. Rectified positive and rectified negatory. Good. So now we've put in the L uh, the 7805. Well, before before we actually do the rec pause and prep thing, we can just finish this bit off here by there's some other little tiddy tiddler of a component that we're going to pop in here. Get over here. Get over here. There we go. I think Autodesk should be giving me a copy copy of Eagle complimentary for all of the good work I did it. Now we need an electrolytic core, electrolytic capacitor. C A P A C I T O R, capacitor. Okay, have I spelt capacitor wrong? <laughs> How can I do that wrong? No, these are these are capacitors. Here we go, European symbols. Blum 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 blum. None of those are electrolytic. Electrolytic. Uh, polarized. Polarized. Let's see. These are really expensive ones. No, we won't want expensive. We want cheap. And mm, I think we like the sticky up ones. And I'm going to think that's probably about right. Again, consult some data sheets at this point. You know, I'm just throwing down components, but we can always change them later, you see, so I'm not bothered. But if you're doing it professionally, because you is a pro, not like me, although I guess I kind of am. <laughs> right, that's the right way around, by the way. See, the positive of the capacitor is going to the up. The bottom of the capacitor is going to grand. And you know how I love getting uh, component getting confused with component legs. And we're gonna make that, I don't know, something like that. Fine. So the purpose of this capacitor is to um, smooth out the rectified 12 volts. So it's coming through and it's gonna be all a bit noisy and it's gonna be a bit hummy. And these things are trying to smooth out some of that um, and absorb some of that because once you start hitting it with load, uh, that's when you start getting all these weird things occurring. We're going to plop that in, but again, trial and error really. There's going to be loads of standard values that people use for these, and you can just shove in loads. To be honest, you can maybe see designs where they're going to have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of capacitors in here with different values to sort of get rid of all the various bits and bobs. And it depends. We're not. This is a digital circuit, not audio circuit, so we're kind of. Uh, well, I suppose you could use it for audio. Um, audio, you need to take a bit more care because you don't want all those hums coming through. Right, let's get our regulator doing its thing. Uh, we want some labels on here. So you've used linear um, regulators before. You've certainly seen them. And they're kind of simple comp devices. You've got three legs, input, output, and ground. And input is normally like your 12 volts. Your output is your five volts. And your ground is your ground. So you can see we've got all this going on. We, what we can do, just thinking about it, we can probably, we've got the rec pause, but you know that we've got rec neg. We can probably just call this ground at this point. I think that's absolutely fine. Everything at this point is going to be referenced to that. And then for our five volt regulator, we're going to put rec pause in there like that. And then on the output, we're going to put 5V. We could put DC even. If you really want to be sure, it's DC. Now, again, you've got the uh, option here of putting electrolytics. And I say option, you probably want to. I mean, I've, I've done circuits before. I haven't bothered, and it's fine too. So it depends on your use case. And I'm just going to plop in one across here. And we're going to give it just little ones. Now, you've got to go into your supplier and look at the data sheets on things. Because I'm using just these random footprints right now. But remember, not all values will be available in uh, the correct footprints. 100 microfarads should be good enough. Right, so I'm just going to have a quick look in the chat now. Let's see where we are. So Edwin, we're going back up. Make it for old school computers like C64 9 Wing. We, that's what we're doing. We agreed on that, guys. And uh, Fairfight's interested to see how this is going to come out. And David is suggesting use TIL 240. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you need to do TIL 240 and 240 TIL or something. Um, 
Oh, uh, Edwin's off. Edwin's disappeared. Oh, no. He said, next time try KCAT. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go to try that one. And he, he submitted £5.49 Super Chat. Thank you. Oh, that's for Eagle. <laughs> is the five is the five euro forty nine to pay for Eagle? Thank you. <laughs> and Roland, Roland saying, "Love your show, pure entertainment." Well, I don't know about that, but thank you. I will accept the compliment. <laughs> okay, right. So that is the uh, one one power supply we've made there. And anybody uh, who has to run, um, I do appreciate. It. It's very early on a Saturday, and you feel free to just run along. Um, and this video probably will be available um, in this. You know, we can we can make a video thing of it so that you can watch it later. That's what I want to say. Now let's see if we can find a seven eight twelve power supply. Uh, seven eight one two. Um, I put in LM LM seven eight. Right, so we've got a whole set here. So we've got five. Oh, here we go. Seven eight zero oh, eight. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they've got all these TVs and different things, but this is a, this will be a 12 volt one. So what you could do, you could use the Eagle swap component function. But I think if I just do this, bing, and just do that, bong, that will work fine. But what we need to make sure we do is we've got to now change. We've got different voltage rail. We've got a 12 volt one. So, so far good isn't it i mean do you anybody in the chat i'm gonna i'm gonna throw the uh, thing open to the chat if there's anybody has any questions or confusions at this point please absolutely please feel free to absolutely uh, raise them right now while i'm just looking at some ancillary components that we're going to need here so i'm going to look for some sort of terminal things I'm not sure if um, Eagle as a library has them, but I just want some sort of screw terminals. Screw clamp. Ooh. Ooh. These are good. Way go. Way. Way go, dude. Right, so that's going to be absolutely fine for us. These are the, uh, I think these are like the little green plastic th screw terminals you've seen me use where sometimes you also have a PCB component and a uh, terminal block component that you can kind of swap out and interchange. Right, so 240 VAC. Yes, please. 240 uh, VAC-2. dash So, um, Fairfright, how many amps will the two rails offer? Well, it's a combination really of what the transformer can supply. So depending on what one we buy here, Remember, I'm just. This is like a reference circuit at this point because none of these values are really real. Um, but I'm going to put in a three amp fuse. So let's do that. We not we haven't got part numbers in for anything, so we'd have to go to look at the uh, data sheets. The only things we've got part numbers for really are the, the regulators at this point. Um, but yeah, you just find a a, tr a coil basically, a, a transformer coil, which is going to be massive, a big fat fat one basically, will do the trick. Um, and then it will provide whatever current you want. I mean, if you you could put like say a, a, a transformer that could supply like 10 amps, but uh, you know then make maybe put like a three amp fuse or a two amp fuse depending on your output. So it can really provide a lot. And then you're you're obviously um, going to be maybe limited by the these things because if you've got a 12 volt output and you're re linear rectifying it, uh, regulating it down to five volts, and then you're drawing a lot of current, this bad boy is going to get hot. So you're going to really put a couple of heat sinks on these. And then there's going to be a point where you're going to need some forced air. So it's, it's really, the design's flexible. You could make this as meaty or as, as weedy as you want at this point. So for the outputs, again, maybe we, will we just use the same kind of screw clamps? Why not? I mean, again, this is like a, a reference design, and it's it'd be entirely up to uh, whoever was making it to choose what they would want on this. But I don't know if I'm ever going to make this. I probably won't. But you could take this schematic, for example, though, and literally wire wire this thing in your with without even you don't need a PCB, for example. Um, you might just maybe have a little PCB to put in your uh, 7805 and 7812. I mean, we can make a little, we'll design those two parts on the PCB nicely. And maybe we'll just put these as other pin headers for the other bits. Because, ah, sod it. 
<laughs> Let's just make it. <laughs> By BDC. Uh, grand. I haven't heard the kids for a while. I might have to nip out at one second and just have a look. BDC before, you know, child, child uh, social thingy starts knocking on the door. Right. So let's just have a quick overview. I think we're good. We're all good in the hood on this. Um, all of the components look like they make sense. Um, I'm going to put this here so it's just a bit neater. Um, I'm going to move our uh, input output pin headers and then you can actually uh, stop dicking around with it. There you go. You can see the whole thing on the screen. So that's the design right now. So let's go to a board. Switch to board. Yes, please. Blah, blah, blah. Oh my gosh, that, that rectifier component is tiny, by the way. That's no good. That is not going to give us much meat. So I think before we worry too much about that, let's let's swap out this component here with a, a, a beefier, beefier bridge rectifier. Take it to the bridge, rectifier. Take it to the bridge, rectifier. Right. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Now, if anybody knows of a, a decent um, standard uh, rectifier that they like to use, I mean, I'm happy to look up that part number. I'm, I'm thinking of the one. I've got one in the box. It's about so big. They normally come in about... Um, about an inch or so, They're like an inch, little inch square device. These are all these are all very delicate. I think that's the one I'm I'm imagining. That's the one, five mil, ten mil. It's still kind of small. Let's look up something a bit bigger. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, yes, that is the one. So let's pop that there. What makes you think you're the one? Do, 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 do. Right. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Bark like a dog. Because you got the power. Right. So I'm going to put that on this side of the PCB. Because it's man's. Hang on a minute. Hang on a cat and pick a minute. I'm, uh, I'm just sort of looking at this thing and thinking, oh, okay, let's be careful. Let's just get everything on the board for now. That transformer is too small as well. <laughs> we've got loads of things that are too small. I mean, if we could assume we're going to do like a sort of chassis chassis mount transformer, then I think you're you're good to go. <laughs> but let's let's keep going. Right, let's have a quick look at the chat. Um, Mr. PGT is shilling some paper rolls to uh, Retro Man Cave, and uh, that's a teeny tiny transformer. Mr. Beer is saying, yeah, it's it's like a baby transformer. So let's see if we can get a better one. Um, I remember I was saying earlier, this is like the power of um, these tools. You know, you don't have to stick with bad designs. Transformers, robots in disguise. Do, 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 do. The Decepticons. Soundwave. Yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, you see these transformers sometimes have two secondary windings. Think how sexy that is. You can get one which is giving you a primary of like two forty, and then a twelve volt and a five volt out. So if you get a five volt out and then you rectify that through a linear, well maybe a five point something, and you rectify that though through. Um, um, a rectifier and then put it through a linear 5 volt power supply then your linear power supply is not going to get so hot but I'm really going on this sort of footprint you see these big the picture of the footprints I kind of want that one that's simple like a little teeny one where it's just two in two out so you don't get confused and if you see in a there's a future video um, of me fixing a toaster of all things and that's pretty much um, how I did the fixing of the toaster. So this kind of looks like an okay part. I'm going to put that there though. It's going to take a little tiny bit of fettling. Fettling. Let's see if we can hook this in. Look, sometimes I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, boy. <laughs> see, we've got that pin there, that pin there, 
that pin there. See, it fits like a glove. <laughs> Okay, so electrically it's good, but ergonomically I think we can do better with our <laughs> our layout. So I'm just gonna do that. Let's hook all these little wires, fire wires, back up. Uh, I can sort of cheat on the uh, mains things. Just put that there. Put that there. Good. We're good again. Save that, bang. So uh, David's saying, um, what sort of software am I using? I'm using uh, Eagle, uh, some old version, whatever version I've got, Eagle CAD. I sometimes use version five because I've got a license for five, and I think this is version seven because it's given me a free go or something for education, and I feel I'm educating you. Um, so let's have a look at the chat. It says, um, that Basil Bantam. Is it Basil or Basil? Basil Bantam. Does this sort of thing need to be earthed? I'm always a bit nervous playing with main stuff. Well, yeah, I think if you're going to put it in a metal box, your earth your that will come in off your lead should go to the metal box, basically. So that's earthed, uh, grounded. But you don't hook it up to this, okay? So this is a, a different ground, effectively. Do not hook your case ground to this ground. Um, there you go. So Mr. PGT's basically uh, on answering that question. So this power supply does look like this transformer does look more like what we want. Although I have to admit this electrolytic is looking pretty darn huge, but I'm happy enough with that. So let's see. We've got a primary. So what you want to do? You've got your main side coming in, and that's your primary. So you kind of want to separate everything out when you're doing this sort of thing. And I'm looking at our circuit. So we've got to find where is our input. And I think it might be this. So this will be the main input side of the PCB. And the reason it's important is you're going to have an isolation route. Now, I have to admit in Eagle, I haven't done an isolation, isolation route. But there will effectively be an isolation layer in the software. And if I drew it, on the dimensions. So this is the board outline. I'm going to do I'm going to sort of modify it on board outline layer just to show you what sort of thing it would look like. Um basically, you're going to have something Oh my gosh, how did I do that so badly? Hang on. <laughs> right. So you're going to have um a cut, a milled cut in the board that can look however you want it to look, although that's pretty damn stupid how I've done that because it made the board very weak um, and the idea is that you, it, oh, that's so terrible um, it doesn't allow them the low side the you know, you've got the low voltage here and the high voltage you have no I you have no way of the mains to arc across but because this is such a big board right so the gap is going to be pretty big like you don't need that physical milled out bit I don't think really there's all sorts of layers inside Eagle and if we look in Eagle uh, you see you've got these keep outs, top keep out. So this is kind of handy because this is for basically ground planes and things like that. So you can specify, I'm going to specify, we want this whole region that you keep out of it, literally. And you should have a look. There is a, a website, uh, there are websites probably on the uh, IEEE or ICT or whatever, um, will tell you um, what the um, distance is for 240 volts. Um, and you're going to put like a bottom keep out and a top keep out here. And basically, imagine the rest of the board you might put in a ground plane, for example. So you need the gap between here and the edge of that to be the minimum um, distance. And I'm just going to type into Google, let's see, 240 volt uh, I'm just going to put in some random keywords almost because I, I, I kind of, let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. AC mains. Right, so you can see kind of they've done that here. You see like there's a gap between here and here. There you go. You see like that? There's a gap between one and the other. Now, it does. It, this is a, an opto isolator, by the way, that's doing something. And look, they've got. Um, they've even got the uh, bridge rectifier doing that too, which is kind of cool too. So yeah. 
you're gonna have to google that to be super sure but i do like what they've done so let's let's copy what they've done in terms of also the rectifier ah if i can grab the right components here now don't by no means take my uh well i'm saying verbatim in terms of getting this right because again this is the first time i've been doing doing this circuit or doing this kind of circuit but having witnessed a lot of um by the way, this is the problem with the free version of Eagle. It's, uh, if you've got the free version, your board can only be a certain size and clearly it's too small. Um, it doesn't really work actually, this. I mean, I can put, um, to be honest with you, I'm doing a lot of bloody stupidness. You know why? Because if we're gonna do a keep out region, all you need to do is extend this whole keep out. Why, why, um, how do I? <laughs> okay, I thought I could just redimension those. Let's just put new ones in, it's easier. So what you can do is I would just say, let's just make this um, entire end side of the board. No ground plane, no nothing, no low voltage on there, okay? Boom, then nothing can touch that. So you've got the anything to do with the high voltage um, and the transformer is on one side. So let's lay out the rest of the components. So you're gonna put your fuse probably quite near this whole thing, aren't you? I mean, that's kind of traditional, isn't it? I mean, that cap though really could be with a bit, <laughs> a bit smaller, I think. Okay, uh, sort of under my breath doing that muttly bracken fracken. And I like we've got X2 and X3, one of them, of course, being 5 volts and one being thing, and we don't know which is which. Um, X2 is 5 volts. And so this is 5 volts and this is 12 volts. No problemo. It doesn't really matter which way around they go, of course. It's up to you. Um, and whether we want them on the side or the edge, I mean, yeah, as long as they're not too near our 12 volts, but we would want probably some mounting holes. But they can go together, so let's leave them like that for now. I think that's safe enough, to be honest with you. Little gap, fine. Right, and that's their capacitors. And remember, we don't have any smaller passives on here right now, but you might have some. So we, we've got plenty of room to add those later if there's issues with ripples and ropples and all sorts of things like that. Um, we've got plenty of room here for this tracking for this so kind of it's a bit annoying that the fuse comes out and then goes back in uh, let's let's evaluate that in a moment so you've got a 12 volts here I'm thinking let's put them this way because that way you'll have plenty of room for those nice big little clip on heat sinks while well, I have a little elixir think about think about this fuse and think about what I have done right well I would suggest then maybe we put definitely a small cap, but <laughs> I think that looks nice like that. We could definitely do that with the uh, fuse and keep a keep out even into that corner. Um, but it would be nice to have, uh, remember this is still low voltage by the way, so I different fuse. I'm going to bring the fuse inboard a bit so I've got space for a mounting hole. Um, yes, dastardly and muttly. Mr. PGT got the reference. Uh, yeah, if you kept the transformer off the board, you wouldn't need that. But you, 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 you still kind of have to be careful where the uh, wires are going. Right, let's just lay it out. We're done. Save that. That's the layout done. Just wire it up. Oh, before we lay it up, should we put some holes in before we forget? Um, I think we actually have some nice drills. Do we have a holes library? Hmm holes. Five mil. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah, maybe a three mil. <laughs> three mil, probably a bit more sensible. Yeah. Mm. Now, if you're doing it properly, though, before I'd make this, get this board made, I would definitely measure these dimensions and get them all nicely dimensioned from the edge of the PCB so that they make some sort of engineering sense. Go, bang, 
Right, so this is starting to look like a, a nice little board. I'm going to move the fuse over. And I'm going to, just from visually, I can see that these need to go outboard one teeny bit. So we're just using the default. It's funny, this is the default Eagle footprint uh, for the board. And we've gone with that, and it's fine. When you've been moving stuff around, the yellow lines are a mess. Press the net button to clean them up and make stuff more obvious. What are you talking about, Mr. Pink Mouse? The yellow lines are fine. I like to use them. I like to keep them on the screen at all times because I can see then what's hooking up to what's hooking up. If you have a different style though, by all means, do it the way you like to do it. So you can go fat, P-H-A-T. I'm not going to go that fat though. Yeah, you know why? One, fat tracks are good because you... Um, they'll be, have the current capacity you want, but be careful because we've used this socket and I'm assuming it can handle 240 volts. But imagine these two tracks, if they're really near each other, they can arc across and they'll burn out on your PCB. So don't go crazy. So I'm gonna just go do this. I'm just gonna take them. See, they're coming out perpendicularly, sorry, well, coming out 45 degrees um, straight out the board. So that's pretty much, they're moving away from each other. <laughs> As, as as fast as possible and we can continue with the fat tracks we don't really need them that fat at this point because they are um, not going to be carrying massive currents but I'm just seeing now looking at this if you want to get away with a single sided PCB in terms of tracking let's let's look at this now if we move this rectifier here you're thinking, why am I moving that rectifier all the way over here? There'll be a sensible reason for that. And that's because you've got this thing going on. Okay. Although, hang on, why did it? I'm not sure why it complained about that. Yeah. And then you've got some easy hookups, right? Like that. Okay, that's good. But then we have to get to that other side of that fuse. So the only sensible way really would be... I would say something like this. Boom. See, that's quite nice, isn't it? That works out well. And we can continue with the fat um, tracking. I mean, I quite like the, the fat, P-H-A-T, fat tracking. Because um, remember the question was raised, I think, by Fairfight about current. I mean, you can, you can reuse this design, right, and keep those... Um, tracks basically as fat as you want make them really huge and then you'll have um, quite a lot on this uh, right hand side side of the design where it can have um, um, plenty of uh, capacity in the future so there's a question um, but Andrew says would it be bad to have the fuse next to the rectifier well I don't see why it's bad as long as you've got a fuse I think it's fine uh, if anybody in the chat wants to chime in on that, I would have no problem keeping them there. I mean, it's it's this is fuses on the low um, the low voltage side. In fact, I made those keepouts. I think I should make them restrict. I can't remember now in Eagle what what it doesn't. I'm going to keep it as keepout. Either way, it will make a design rule check error probably if you don't do it. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that there, and we may put that on the bottom as well. So. We're basically saying all of that, that kind of represents the kind of high voltage here and then the, you know, unregulated side of the circuit. So this this side here would be the little electronic side, you know, where you're going to put in your little bits and bobs, your passives, anything else you need. I think that's okay. And although these are kind of cute in line, I think we can just, let's bring them up so that they're, centralized again depending on the heat sinks these things will or will not fit i'm pretty sure they won't fit right now because of this massive capacitor which we're going to change in a moment so we can just again lay out the tracks again on the bottom of the pcb i suppose you could if these are through hole vias you probably could and we don't really need as thicker you could go half that if you want well or just make them as fat as there you go I, I kind of have something slightly against making a um, trace as big as the pad. Fine, just do it. This is your PCB. Put as much copper on it as you can. 
you won't get that issue like when you're trying to desolder a spectrum bloody resistor off a spectrum board and it you know starts to delaminate itself and we can always put a ground plane on this and I suspect we will be we always tend to in our designs and that's pretty much a mirror those two are mirroring each other um, would it be better with the fuse on the bottom right well yeah if you if you budge up the rectifier I think we could fit that there we'll have a play in a minute We'll have a play in a minute. And then that's going to go there. That's going to go. Stranger, I didn't quite line those up, but whatever. It's going to go there. Sometimes you can get hung up, by the way, on uh, of, of these sorts of layouts, really, and how they look. Because um, when you get the PCB made, you find often it doesn't quite look how you had in mind. Oh, well, you don't really care at that point as long as it works electrically. And then we're going to go to here. Now, this is we got an inter interesting, interesting one. Um, let's see how we can lay this out. Do we want to bring that? Mm -hmm. Where do we want the join to be? That's the question. That works fine, by the way. You could just do that. You could do that. Or you can do that. Um, my preference um, is probably that, I think. And then you got this last ground to come in. And I think that's good. That should work fine. Right, so the question being less AC tracks to run out of the board. So if we can get that fuse, we can basically remove some AC tracking so let's do that and let's just unhook that one bit there okay Andrew's saying I missed the ground on the 5v side yeah well let's uh, there's a reason I'll come back to that okay so let's pop this there, which is probably yeah, I think that fits nicely actually. Um, gives you loads of room, really. I mean, mechanically, I don't know how close those will be, it depends on the um transformer you got. Uh, I think while we're at it, we might as well move this guy. I mean, you can go right back there, and that gives a bit more room too, so that's good. Good move. I like it. Let's bang that on there. Ah, let's just put that here. It's fine. Ground there. Right. All the ducks are swimming in the water. Now, if you really want to make it kind of neat, you probably could just use the auto route. I would, um, what I would recommend though, if you're thinking about doing that, is lay out this part yourself first and then run the auto route but it should do a pretty good job if you put all of these uh, keep outs and whatnot so we've got the two grounds here finally to sort of hook up and this is this one on this 5 volt side as uh, Andrew mentioned um, 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 yeah lemon jelly pink mouse you got it Tilo 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 we are building I'm gonna just flip this over for the benefit of Tilo we are building a power supply, which is giving a 5 volts and a 12 volts out for retro power supply usages. It's just a linear power supply, and we are uh, we're just playing at the minute, really. I mean, I don't really like this tracking. It doesn't look so pretty. It's not so pretty. I like it to be pretty, but as we're using sort of conceptual random components, it probably doesn't mean anything at this point. And I'll put the design on my GitHub um, uh, pretty much immediately after this stream, so feel free to go in and start messing. 
Um, now, we've got this ground that I want to hook up, right? And I probably would have just put it from here to here, basically. Um, but I also want to just put in a ground plane anyway. So I'm at this kind of juncture where, all right, I'm going to do this to appease the rooting gods. But you see how it's it's complaining? <laughs> yeah, it's just annoying. It's just kind of complaining. It's like, okay, fine. But I've got these like loads of grounds now running over the same place, which just is annoying. But, you know, that's fine. Hey, uh, Dutch Retro Gamer, good boy. Good morning. I said good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Pat your head. Uh, Tilo, well, I'm doing it to, uh, yes, UK main specifications where the primary fuse is off board. Off board indeed. But yes, if um, in Germany, continental Europe, yes, you might want to add a fuse. I would suggest making the board a little bit longer and putting a, a fuse like this one on the front. You can maybe, uh, but I, I like the idea actually. If you're if you're doing this, I would suggest an off-board fuse in the enclosure, one of the little um, screw type, you know, horses for courses. You decide, <laughs> you decide your design. Um, let's add a. How do we do it? Polygon. There we go. Polygon. And I want to add a bottom polygon. Oh, that's a very thick polygony. I'm gonna just do 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 do. I'm gonna give a little gap here, and we're gonna go to there. Get off, and then I'm gonna do the top one. Now, when you're doing the polygons for the ground planes, you can actually just do them off board as well. You see, like that. I often do them off board. I'll definitely do them staggered because I can find it difficult sometimes to grab the planes. <laughs> That's an interesting shape on that one. And we'll set those to ground. And then we will... It's weird. It's like if you click certain things, I don't know how you do it, but if you click certain commands, they'll regen the ground planes for you. Not figured out how to actually do it. But for fun, look, we just ran the auto router and it said, yeah, I can't do anything. So um, that is starting to look quite usable, really. Um, Tilo, I would like your opinion. Um, for the AC input, how about one of the figure eight adapt things rather than the screw terminals? Easier to track in a draw that way. Well, yes. Well, I want to let's let's clarify this circuit, though. OK. Um, the reason I put screw terminals on it, one, because they're a decent pad for you to solder to, yeah? Um, but I wouldn't expect you to even put the terminals on. You know why? Because I'd expect this to live in a box, and then you would solder probably from these to your panel mount things. So that figure eight adapter you're talking about, a lot of those are, are panel mounts. You'd cut a square in your box, and you push that in, and there's two solder tags. And then you'd literally solder a wire from that tag to this PCB, maybe with a bit of heat shrink if you're, if you're concerned and maybe via another fuse that's also panel mount. And then if you think of a power supply that goes to your, your computer, um, that's also going to have um, hard wire. They're basically hard wired into your brick, aren't they? So then you take the wire and solder it here via the strain relief, and then that's your power supply. Now also, conversely, if I'm using this in an enclosure, like one of those project boxes, because I'm making like a desktop power supply, and I, I might want some ammeters and voltmeters and all sorts, all of that stuff is panel, uh, panel wiring equipment. Again, you're talking probably solder connections, or maybe in that case you might consider using the uh, terminal uh, lugs. I think I've, I've actually got some somewhere, but let me just see if I can find you them. Um, PCB terminals. I can't even make I think Fisher or somebody make them, but oh, here we go. So that's the um, type that I tend not to use. Um, I'll show you the type that I advise people using. So those are okay. I mean, these are cheap, cheap and nasty. They're, they're, they're okay. But you see this one, these are kind of getting more like it. Now there's a two pack um, one, um, which I can't remember who makes them. Oh, by the way, these ones are quite good too. These gray things that are just probably in the top right corner where you can't see it. These ones are pretty good. Those actually are nice. Um, but again, you don't need them to be so ah, in, in reinsertable. But the ones you want to use are those. So you've got a mating half that lives on the uh, PCB. That's when you've got a part so you can actually remove your PCB by just unhooking those. And let's see if it's weird that this picture 
doesn't show both halves but you can imagine that's the bit where you screw your wires in and it's like a little plug and then it there's a little socket that lives on the PCB that takes takes those um, oh so Connor's saying types rat's nest to put the plane into effect okay let's try that because if we dick around with the plane we should be able to break it ah so I always put the plane on the outside there we go so we've broken the plane if we can type rat's nest oh Connor, I've been using this for like 10 years and I, I didn't have a solution. And now you've, you've, cause <laughs> you've, you've helped me out so much. <laughs> Funny enough, right? The reason I don't have a solution for it is that it, um, sometimes there's these minor things, isn't there, that you just put up with. Um, and I don't know why you live with them so long. It's like something that you've, you, you can't be bothered to go onto the internet and try to find out a solution for, um, so it's just, some things are just low friction enough for you to ignore them. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a gorgeous fat track, isn't it? Oh yeah, look how gorgeous. A bit too much. 0.7 is what we used. Anyway, you can go around and change these in the um, wire editor. I'm just, I'm just, stop it. Right. Seeing how we might want to do this. Yeah, so T.I. is saying a removable IEC. Yeah, I, I always use one of those kettle lead things, really. Um, if you saw my arcade activator design, that's a really good example of um, the sort of panel wiring approach that you will take on a lot of projects. Yeah, this, um, this fuse isn't lining up to this uh, imperial grid. Boom! I think that's okay. Does it annoy you that these are not equidistant? Because it annoys me. Um, <laughs> that's just the kind of guy I am who gets annoyed over s silly things. But nah, I think that's better. I don't know. It just I want it to look pretty. I want it to look pretty. Yes, I think that's pretty sweet. Sweet. Ah. So let's have a little review now in the chat because um, yeah, I've been neglecting you guys for a while. So Tilo's suggesting a removable AC lead, yes, with the figure eight, but I would suggest the IEC like he suggests that's got the earth on it. So that's awesome then. Without PE, it would be okay, but the fuse will save headaches later on. What does PE mean? PE, panel earth? I suggest to use a panel mount fuse holder in your box. That's it. Yeah. Daddy. Hello. What can I do for you? We're in a shrine. Yeah. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And it's so tricky because yeah. we need to do one tricky thing. Dinner. Come here. First, the finish. So you need me to help you with a shrine in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? Yes. Okay. Give me five minutes, okay? Off you go. Okay. Can you shut the door, please? It's freezing. Right, the dad duties are calling. But before I go off and do some dad duties, I want to do... I would like to see if I can get some accessories on here. Oh, look at that heat sink. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Oh, yeah. I know I talked about those hip hip uh, clip-on heat sinks. But these ones are so pimped out. Let's see. Now, you probably won't need them anyway. But damn, that was fine. I think there might be a footprint for the clip-on ones that clip onto that package. But it, okay, so these are, if you want to go real um, kick ass, like silly, silly heatsink, okay? These ones are your, your your boys, right? And you got to remember, they do uh, technically need to be wired in. I think that's the pads on these. Um, so I'm just going to tuck those up real quick. Man, these are fine heat sinks. <laughs> this will be good if you want to use this for welding, making your welding valves or I don't mean, but let's go belt and braces. Um, Let's see if these look sensible at all. Oh, look at that. You know you want it. What do you think, guys? Should we see if we can shoehorn these things in? Yes, Andrew, you should. 
You know it makes sense. I'm gonna rip up, rip up, rip up, rip up, rip up everything. The whole design now is based around those heat sinks. And actually, um, I'm gonna just get rid of our uh, ground planes because they're kind of annoying me now. So, instead of going to help my kids out with their gaming woes, I think this is more important right now. The most important thing in my life. You could probably just use one heat sink to be fair and um, mount them back to back, but no. <laughs> if you're gonna do it, you've gotta overdo it. And it might require us to shrink down on some of our components, mainly the size of this ridiculously large capacitor. I mean, that is bonkers source anyway but let's see if we shunt this guy over uh, 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 uh. yeah we're gonna move those off board it's fine and then you again available on github if you've got eagle or the free version of eagle you don't even have to pay for it this will work fine If you, what you can do, you can actually do a fork of my design and you can um, you can do a, pu a push request and you can say, Andrew, I've done a better version of your design. You can have it. And uh, you can do a push request and then I can come, or a pull request rather, and uh, I can uh, come and have a look at your design. Should this capacitor be the other way around? Now's a good time to do that. That might be a bit better in a, in a fit. Yeah, I think that's a bit better for us. And then you've got your ground. Boom. Now, uh, let's make a cent. I'm hooking these up to one point of ground, so then it's, uh, it's not going to complain as much when we do. What have I done with our five volts, though? It's kind of annoying. Hmm. What it's trying to do. Okay, right. So now I think that's starting to look a little bit more beefy, but I'm, I'm kind of thinking if I screwed myself with my ground a little bit, probably not. I mean, it's definitely get at a ball because we could just join it here, but whatever. Now we didn't hook up the uh, second ground plane on the power supply. I don't know if that's going to come out and bite us in our ass because it won't. Your uh, when you do your ground plane, it's not going to fill that nicely. So you probably want to do that, even though electrically it probably doesn't make any difference. The reason you want to hook your ground plane onto it, by the way, is that your PCB becomes pretty much heat sink yeah so that will really help again not so much that important in this application but it, it can help and you've got ground here to do which to be honest is probably a bit fat for that gap there but it's gonna be fine right so there we go so the last correction to make before we put in the ground plane is let's just hook up that and if you're ever in doubt by the way if something's hooked up just do that and you can see it's wiggly and the legs are, the legs are attached boom now when we put in a uh, fill for this ground it's all going to work out anyway but you see it's not attached between here and here but don't worry about that let's do it now the final the final fill. It's the final countdown. Now, the polygon um, size depends on your wire size in Eagle, so try to use a smallish wire size. And if you're doing a really small PCB, I use a, like a tiny one. So that's that one. And then we're going to do the top. And 
you can see I offset the top and the bottom so I can come and grab them later when I want to do something like this. Put in ground. Grab that one there, put in ground. And let's see if that command works. Rats nest. Oh yeah. There. So let's uh, have a look. Sorry, I just uh, read that one. Came from RST. I haven't got a clue why they draw a separate iron leaf. Uh, yeah, there's some sort of discussion. There's a discussion going on about an RS's generic disappointments. So really, if you wanted to, you could probably um, get rid of uh, the key pounce if you just wanted to make it look simple. Um, but no, I think that's that's pretty much a decent uh, design. Now looking here though, I, I kind of can't remember what this is. There's a there's a hole basically in these rectifiers and I'm not ever really sure what that's for. I don't think I've seen any componentry in it. But what you could do, and I'm kind of loath to do this, but There's pros and cons, basically. I'm running the secondary slightly close to the primary, but I think there's plenty of space there. Plenty of air gap between that. What you could do, you see, is just route these a little bit tighter. And the reason being, you could put a mounting hole on the board. So you could keep the underneath of that totally empty basically by doing something like that All right so you've kind of rooted around I don't like the pitch of that I kind of prefer something like that <clears throat> and again I don't really like what I've done here either ah I think I'm gonna go with that yeah okay and you can get your whole library again. Holes and I don't know, let's put a five mil here that you could just put that in there. So there's mounts up with something. I, I don't know what that's for. I, I, I really don't know if there's a heat sink or something like that um, that goes on there. Um, but that's fine. So Anybody in the uh, chat, um, I think we are almost done and we're going to maybe pop this on GitHub. I, I will actually put it on GitHub on the on the stream so we can make sure I have done it. Uh, <laughs> but while I'm just drawing in, redrawing these keep outs, please feel free to make any more comments on the design. Any other sort of changes you think would be ne neat to do? The single inline rectifier package is that one which has the all the things lined up, so you have the ACs on one side and the DCs on the other. Because I think that would be quite nice. But yeah, yeah. So the square rectifier has a hole to to bolt mount it, so it's nice. We've got the hole in there anyway. It's kind of cute, isn't it? Um, I, don't, I really haven't learned how to do milling. I mean, should we just real quick? The kids aren't banging on the door. It would be neat to see how do we do the milling layer. How do we do a milling layer? Uh, actually, I think it's really easy. Hang on, I might be, pardon me. I think we just go, there is a milling layer. Look, literally. So, I think you can just do that. So if you wanted that to be like milled out there, if you really wanted to, you could probably put that there. I wouldn't have them hook up though, because it would make your PCB a bit weird, uh, weird <laughs> a bit weak. And then you could do the same, I think, on the other side. Which would maybe interfere with your mounting hole a tiny bit. 
I've got a plan actually. I'm a man with a plan. I've just noticed something, and I'm thinking. If, I'm just pretending now. I would was just about to go and order this PCB. Um, if I was going to order this PCB, I'm just sort of thinking now. Okay, what what things would I change right now? Let's pretend I am going to push the button on this guy, and I was going to order this uh, one. I probably would just bring these tracks as tight as possible in. like that okay and then I would get our uh, milling layer which I'm kind of thinking they might prefer a rounded edge but thing and I would probably do a small one like that I want to see what can we do yeah I think we need to do it as a polygon ideally or can we just do it as a we just do it as a fat wire, basically. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> that would annoy him. Right. Let's. Uh... I'd like a mirror of that wire, but you won't be able to pick it up. It's not a shape. I think. Can you? No. So you can't pick it up because it's not like a polygon. So be careful with it. If you want if you intend to move it uh, okay right I'm kind of thinking that's starting to look a bit more like it isn't it there we go I think that's all right so the reason I'm kind of putting this stuff in here is because you might have a mounting screw. <laughs> I kind of wanted to make sure that this track was away from that so you weren't any arcing coming through and zapping you. So uh, this uh, mill here is definitely going to help you with that. So <laughs> I think, again, consult your uh, appropriate, you know, um, electrical standards book on what these should be and how big those gaps are. It might be really big. It might be like, you know, eight mil or something. And then in that case, you'll have to redesign this. But I don't know. I'm only going with what I see when I look inside uh, normal sort of, uh, you know, Far East power supplies and things. And I kind of feel that this would be about right. I mean, what is the size of this board? I mean, we've got it set to metric, unfortunately. Let's, um, let's put the grid to sensible units so this board is about 10 centimeters by 8 centimeters so it's, still, it's pretty big you know you can you'd have you can shrink this down a lot though right seriously you can put in much smaller components again depending on your current output but I'd, I'd say this would probably be able to drive most most projects So James is saying uh, five millimeters for anything two hundred, and eight millimeters for five hundred plus. So the two two hundred volts we're talking. Is there a ruler in Eagle? Uh, ruler, 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 Ferris, ruler. Do you get a length when you draw a wire? That's the other one. Um, not really. I mean, if we started from here, that's 12. Seven. That's about your five-ish, isn't it? I think it's fine. It says five from there to the cutaway. So, yeah, it's plenty. So I think that's pretty good. So James, I think that's all right. What do you think? James is going to be the arbiter now because he uh, he came up with the mains voltage thing. So if he says this board is good to go, then it's good to go. And he takes full responsibility for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like I should put some silk screen on it. I'm not going to, I'm gonna, I can't be bothered to fanny around with the all the other silk screen, but I like, you know, I'm going to put my little name on it. Uh, copyright 2018. Andrew. No, what do I put in? I put in Dr. Andy. Dr. Andy's Frazzleboard. Dr. Andy's Frazzleboard. There we go, in the T-Silk. 
T well T origins T values T names mm, I like origins or place is fine and also I think when you're making your font I kind of like to do it vector it's vectorized the reason being that uh, most PCB manufacturers seem to mess with the fonts um, ah how do I put character term shift and turn Dr. Andy's Frazzleboard. Boom! I'm not going to put in the back office logo. That is too painful to add right now. Oh, you're a full electrical engineer! Oh, well, that is perfect. You've got all of the certs needed. Um, what, What's your feeling, though, on this ground plane action? Because before we had the rectifier kind of jumping straight into the cap, and then the cap was like the gateway to the rest of the board. But now we have this ground, which is kind of just jumping straight in like that. For me, I don't think it's a problem, but I don't know. Seeing as we've got a uh, electrical engineer here, though, I would really love your opinion on that one. Actually, and I also re re remember we just bloody we just put in a top a top ground plane. We need to get rid of that. We don't want a top ground plane because. Um, because uh, this is a single-sided PCB. <laughs> the good read, because if it was a because if we have a top uh, plane, we could easily just run a ground over the top and put it to the cap. So yeah. Um, 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 um. Uh oh. Hello. Daddy, it's been five minutes. Okay, I'm coming. Yeah. So let's kill the top ground plane. <laughs> because I'm getting nagged now by my kids. But what we'll do, as what I want to do though, is because I kind of think the purpose of a cap, obviously, is to stabilize that. Let's... Let's go full booyah in like that, right? Boom. So we've got definitely more than enough. You're not going to lose any. Um, you're not going to lose any chooch over this one. I kind of like the idea of it coming in like that way. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why I'm doing it. I just kind of like the idea of it coming in from this keep out like that. Okay, that's going to do the trick, right? So, David, see you. Enjoy your wedding. James, uh, I don't know. We're just messing around in this design, but we're looking at like three amps or something. I don't know. I mean, it's just a. We just used random uh, componentry that we could find. There's no real. There's no part number for the transformer or anything like that. But I don't know. I think I think for argument's sake, I think it's looking fine, James. I mean, these heat sinks are way. It's, I don't think you'd need any of this stuff. I think it's just going to be fine. But this is just if you're going to make if you're going to make the the footprint for it all, let's make it right. Make it once. Um, ideally, um, it's all going to come down to this transformer. And the idea of part of the design is it could be an off-board transformer anyway, and you're just going to wire to these pads here. Um, I think if you're going to do manual solder wiring on that stuff, it's all good as well. Uh, I think it should work out. So the uh, only thing for me to do now is to go to GitHub. And we're going to post our design. Andrew, uh, oh, sign in. Don't want it goes up to the sign up page. Okay, GitHub's telling me to change my password because it thinks it's been compromised. So I shall do that. Bloody compromised passwords. It says it's not been compromised in GitHub though, but it was compromised somewhere else. It's like, well, how does GitHub know my password was used somewhere else? Oh. I'm guessing that's if you use Facebook or the like. 
and uh, let's shut that down. So we're going to new a new repository, mm -mm. and what did we call that? Frazzle board or something? Description. Multi output retro computer PSU linear public boom. So we're going to upload the uh, couple of files. I think if I can find them in my window. I'm doing this now though because I know before some people said Andrew you do your thing and then you forget to put your github stuff on because it's it seems too much like real work projects I'm looking I'm looking for it uh, mains PSU I call it so we've got version one there we go imaginatively named PSU dot board and PSU dot thing Untested, unproven, probably dangerous. Refer to the stream for more and blame James Fears. James, I'm going to give you a few seconds before hitting return because I know you might not like your your name in that. I'm only, I'm, I'm only joking. I, I, I feel I, I can remove that. That's a bit cheeky, isn't it? I'll remove that. But thank, I'll thank you. I'll thank you in the stream for your input. But I'm going to take that off there because if someone hurts themselves, I would hate to think them going that James did it. He's the one what did that. So uh, you should be able to at home. Oh, that's fine. You add that. James is fine with that. Well. Well, if that's the case, let's actually um, let's write this up real quick. Um, so, the idea of this board is a general linear power supply for retro computers. It should be okay for audio applications. Please check the required values. Thanks to everyone on the stream. Ah, uh, oh, my fingers. And to James Beers for checking out the design. It shouldn't. Electrocute you, but it might. So be safe and be aware of the risks. Lots of love, Dr. Andy. Well, actually, I don't really like Andy. I'll just put A. I don't like Andy. I don't like being called Andy. There we go. Right. That's, we've done it properly. Look, we've done it all properly. Everything's there. Everything's good. So what can I say, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me on an early morning Saturday. And it's still pretty early morning, so it's like not a wasted day for me. And feel free to uh, have a look at that or pull it or tug it or whatever people do with these things that I post. I mean... We're getting quite the old, uh, we've got 13 repositories now of our projects. They are starting to build up a little bit. Um, and I do love to uh, see it when you guys actually build stuff and take stuff from the repositories and build them um, thing. I've got something to show you though. Keep, keep there, keep there. Now, I've got something to show you. I have had some PCBs come in. Um, these are in limited numbers, but you are welcome. So I have here quite a lot. You can see there's quite a lot of them here. There's one, two, four, six, eight, 12. 
12 of these uh, logic, um, what are these, were these logic probes, logic analyzer, logic probes, which if I recall, we took the uh, whole power of a booby board and we've basically made a booby board in a pen style enclosure. Sorry if it's such a tiny thing on the screen. Maybe I can, I can embiggen that. Bear with me one moment and I can find me icons. Uh, camera full screen there we go so that's the uh, logic probe and it's basically a booby board but mounted in this so you'll actually have a logic uh, probe but the cap capability of having a USB output and some logic uh, input so you can do multiple things and their IO has an onboard power supply and you have that guy which is your buzzer and there's some LEDs here of course because you want your LEDs on there and what I've done recently I'm starting to work on a library to drive these OLED screens using a, a microcontroller because a microcontroller it's a bit tricky because most drivers for these screens are a bit meaty in that they uh, take two you know they, they, they write the whole frame buffer in memory before they shunt it to the uh, device over spy or I said screen so what I've done is I've bit banged the I squared C uh, interface using a booby board, just a tiny little micro where my finger is, just there, that's its chip there doing everything. And I can actually, um, I'm writing a display driver to basically write straight to the screen. What that does though, if we pop that off, does mean if you are smart, and I do have some of these screens available as well, you should be able to mount, look, you should be able to mount one of these right on there. Which would be so cool, right? So it can actually give you, instead of just your LEDs, it can tell you how many volts and stuff it's reading. So th there's a lot of uh, potential in that. So that's the, the one project. And then the other thing I've got, if you remember my RetroNet project, um, I've got a bunch of uh, PCBs, RetroNet PCBs ready to go. You know, they're, they're all ready. You basically solder on your uh, serial port D sub here. Or I'm going to do one for uh, Matt over at Techmoan because he's got uh, some you know, old equipment. I'd like to do one for him to, to use this on an old Apple, you know, like the old Apple classics and stuff. And all you need there is you've got a uh, sort of Max 232 type chip will go there, power regulator, other side your um, ESP16, is it ESP12, ESP3? one of the ESP chips, I can't remember which one I use. Uh, and then there's a USB socket here for power or you can solder straight onto there to uh, give you some power to you know your retro computer. To be honest with you, if you uh, do it right, you might be able to parasitically get enough power to power the board through here. Uh, I think I actually even have a solder jumper to do that because uh, you know, if you drive like DCE high and it will give you a 5 volts, you might be able to get away with that depending on your computer. And if you want to, there's a reset button for that there too. So I do have these PCBs. I am unfortunately off to the US uh, on Monday. I know I just got back from India and then I'm straight back out again, but you know it's the jet set lifestyle for me. Um, so I don't know if I've got time to pop these on the uh, shop. I don't know if I'm selling them. I might just give them away. But just jump on the Discord and let's talk about it, right? Who's interested in taking up what? And then when I get back, I'll just shove all these things in envelopes and uh, post them up. Jenny, good morning. Good morning, Jenny. Um, James, get see you later. Thanks for joining the stream. Um, Yes, and just ping me in Discord and I'll put them in an envelope and ship them out. We can talk about who's going to make the projects and who's going to send me some pictures. Because I do like some pictures. I don't really update my blog as much as I should. And uh, It's about time I took things more serious and start trying to grow the channel a little bit. But yeah, Jenny. Uh, oh, James, where are you? I'm going to be... This trip, I'm going to be probably in Kansas. Um, no, I don't know. I'm probably going to fly to Chicago or Des Moines. So I, I don't know, but you know, I'm always in the US, uh, all over the US and always in uh, Europe and India and all sorts of places, China maybe this year. So uh, yeah, if you're uh, in a global place, feel free again, ping me where you are. I keep promising to go meet up next time I am in the uh, Detroit area. There's quite a few people around there. And uh, I think we'll make the effort. We should do a US meetup. Although, remember, if you're in the UK, of course, um, in about a week's time, there's the Norbrek, the Play Expo in the Norbrek, and I shall be there. So if you'd like a little meet up and meet me there, I shall be wandering. I literally get back from the US and then jump in my car and drive four hours to Blackpool, and uh, I'll be there to see you there. So 
Ah, <laughs> so James, you're in DC and you're going back to Detroit. Well, no, we're definitely going to have uh, meet up in Detroit and have a beer. Download Discord so you can keep in touch with me. Keep in touch. I will forget. I've got a bad memory, but I, I will want to see you. And let's go. I tell you what, we're going to make this power supply there. Oh, Electron Ash is here. Oh, Electron Ash. I was just about to bloody go, but I think I kind of have to. Uh, Electron Ash definitely will want to see this. Electron Ash, go to my GitHub. We've just designed this thing, which is a uh, multi-output linear power supply. Nothing too smart, nothing too clever, but you know, get on that. You're gonna want to make one. We're all gonna let's all make one for fun and then share stories on how electrocuted we got doing it. But oh, by the way, anybody who does want to take this up, I would love this. Please do this for me. I am happy to get the PCB made. I'm happy to buy the parts. But if you can go on and please find me the part numbers for these, I would love that. Find me um, ideally Mouser, uh, RS in the UK, Mouser in the US or DigiKey in the US. I, to be honest, I'm using Mouser more than ever now. They seem to be just, they always have everything I want and I can just order it all from one source. Please do that. Get me the part numbers. If you can help me with the bomb and maybe help me if you think C1 is an insanely big capacitor. Um, I would, uh, I will definitely get onto that, and I will definitely make that in a future video for you. So I really have to go. My kids will be badgering me soon enough again. Breath of the Wild awaits, but uh, it has been lovely having a morning stream, and I'm so happy to be able to get back and do a bit of Eagle because, again, in between all this travel, I haven't been doing any of this, and you got to do what you love. All right, you got to do what you love, guys. So have a great weekend. Um, I'm going to be around later at 6 p.m. There's a premiere of today's video. I'm going to watch that with people, with you guys, if you're there, and we'll have a chat then. Have a good day. Speak to you soon. Bye. -bye.